Hi friends, you must have observed your teacher recording the attendance of students in your class every day or recording marks obtained by you after every test or examination. Similarly, you must have also seen a cricket scoreboard. Do you know that in a game of cricket, the information recorded is not simply about who won or who lost. In the scoreboard, you will also find some equally important information about the game. Similarly, in your day-to-day -day life, you must have seen several kinds of table consisting of numbers, figures, names, etc. These tables provide data. But what exactly is data? A data is a collection of numbers gathered to give some information. Let's go to a sports club that is preparing to do a big sport event. The organizer asks the member, Daniel and Michael, to collect the information from the residents regarding their choice of sports out of cricket, football, hockey and volleyball. Daniel prepared a list of all people by going to their doorsteps, but Michael collected data from the third person, like security guard or one of residents. Due to his personal approach, Daniel's data is called primary data. And lack of personal approach, we can say Michael's data is secondary data. So, can you tell me which data is more reliable or trustworthy? Mostly primary data is taken into consideration as it is more reliable than the secondary data. Here is Daniel's data which is primary and it contains a list of all people and their choice of sports. Now the organizer has to read the names in the list one by one and count the total number of people interested in volleyball. Same will be done for cricket, football and hockey. But is this a good way to handle the data? Probably not. So Maria, another member of the club, got an idea to make data handling easier. As the organizer read the names in the list one by one, she started making a short vertical lines in front of each sport. This definitely made the data less complicated. But John suggested Maria to make group of five lines in order to count the data easily. But to make the counting more easy and efficient, the organizer used the fifth mark in the group as a slanting line. Friends, these marks that are used to organize data are known as tally marks. And by using them, we can even find out frequencies of each and every group in a data easily. But sometimes the given data is too large. For example, data that deals with age of the people or expenses of working individual, etc. In all these cases, sorting of data becomes a time-consuming process. So, to handle data more efficiently, we can first make groups or classes depending on the lowest and the highest value like 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 45, 45 to 16 and so on. Then we can sort each data value in the class it will fall. Let's take an example. We have a data about age of 50 residents of a particular society. Now it's too difficult to sort whole data age-wise. So we can try sorting this data into different groups or classes with equal intervals. As you can see, these classes have an upper limit value and lower limit value. How do we decide this value? Well, there are two methods of making classes. One is inclusive method and another is exclusive method. So can you spot the difference in the way classes are arranged? Yes, in inclusive method, we find upper limit and lower limit of the two consecutive classes are not same. Whereas on exclusive side, we find that both are same. The word inclusive itself suggests that both lower limit value and upper limit value are included or considered. 
while organizing the data in their respective classes. Whereas in exclusive method, the upper limit value is excluded. For example, the age 15 would not come in the first group as we will exclude the upper limit and instead of that, it will fall in the second group as we will consider the lower limit 15 here. And then same will be the case with 30. And one thing to remember that the interval between classes should be same in all classes. I hope the procedure for making groups or classes is clear now. Friends, the tally marks are used to arrange smaller data in only one pattern. But the main question is, what if we have very large data? Can there be any provision to arrange it in a more attractive way? To know all about it, do watch our upcoming sessions. Thank you. Keep watching. Keep learning.